Uh, not necessarily that, you know, obviously you're heavy underdogs, but, um, you know, you want to turn that table on, uh, that table and see you play better. So that, that was just the point. And you go back and watch the tape. Uh, it wasn't just the defense. I know I was really, um, you know, really down after the game defensively with the big plays. But, there, you know, it, you can do those things on offense. And sometimes get away with it and not give up a turnover. But you do those things on defense and results, you know, in, in big plays. And so, uh, you know, things that you don't expect juniors and seniors to do. Meaning this, if we're supposed to be in the big gap and tackle goes down, we've got to get across face. Uh, you know, we, we were very uh, assignment unsound. Now, some of that is because of the bigger and faster bodies. We know, we know that, okay, but you still got to be able to adjust yourself, you know, we got to do a better job coaching, the kids got to do a better job communicating with us, and you got to be where you're supposed to be, you've got to cancel some gaps out. And at this point, we didn't do that. Um, you know, offensively, you had a chance, you know, you, you saw some spurs, you looked at the yard, you said, oh, you must, you know, you did, did some okay things. And there, there was some glimmer, there is some talent there, but, um, you, you know, it's got to be cleaner. It's got to be, um, I just got to watch it again with the players, and, and you know, you. You look at six plays and you're going to find four things that you say, I can't believe, you know, those are simple things. We went the wrong direction or we, you know, our hat placement's wrong. Uh, once again, some of those things were because of the, the, the talent of the player that you're blocking. I get that. But some of the things we can control and, and we didn't do that. And therefore, that's, that's how the game got out of hand and uh, at this point. So, uh, you know, relatively healthy, you know, came out of relatively healthy. Um, you know, we'll go to practice tonight, expect to have everybody there. Um, you know, I thought the backs ran hard. Look at them, take thought all the backs did, did some good things, but we got to do better things without the ball in our hand. There's, you know, Abu and Trent are really uh, the only two guys that've got a tremendous amount of experience back there. Um, there's some things we got to do in pass protection, things we got to do in route combination that those young backs didn't didn't do. So we can those are corrective things, and I look to see those corrected this week. Uh, ball security. I mean, Devin Fair. You know, we expect to get you know the the ball more. And, and um, you know the, the ball got away from him. He didn't, didn't didn't have the nose of the ball up, and it got away from him twice. Uh, you know he'll have to correct it. He can continue to carry the ball. And, uh, that's just that's part of uh, any offensive football. But uh, it's his first game. It really is. I mean he's redshirted, and last year was hurt, so that's his first significant playing time. And uh, you know he, he learned some hard lessons. He really did. Kicking game wise. Um, you know, wasn't a whole lot of stuff happening. I thought, you know, besides LeDevin's fumble, uh, we were where we're supposed to be. I thought we were coached well. I thought, um, you know, we we didn't hurt ourselves in the kicking game uh, by by any means. So, with that, go ahead. What was your players' reaction watching the film with you? What what did they kind of uh, emotionally, I guess, see from it? I think it's some embarrassment. Embarrassment, not necessarily that they lost. Okay, I mean, it's, somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose, somebody's a favorite, somebody's running on. More of how they played. Uh, you know, they expect more of themselves. We expect more of them as coaching staff. And so, uh, you know, there, there, there was a lot of heart-to-heart -heart meetings in, in the last, you know, 48 hours. Once again, not because we lost the game, but um, how we, you know, how we executed. There are some things. You know, you're going to miss some tackles, and I can handle missing some tackles. That's a part of football. You're, you're going to drop a pass. That's part of football. Okay, but you know, you can't not be where you're supposed to be and not only do you have the physical the physical challenges but then you've got the schematic challenges of of, of you know one linebacker's got to cover two gaps can't can't have those things in as far as the turnovers uh, you know one no excuse on dealing on the one you know interception I mean it, it, there's one high safety he leaves a inside release fade route in the middle of the field inexcusable uh, the other one, I thought the kid made a nice play on. So it was a hard play, action, fast. The ball's got to come out of there a little bit quicker. Uh, and he didn't do it, and uh, paid the price for that in that corner. Undercut it, made it, made a nice play. I can live with that one. Can't live with the with the other one. Therefore, that's why Neil played. You know, probably all of the, you know, I guess three quarters of the second half. Coming coming out of this game, what are some things you're going to be working on this week? Once again, there you go. After watching that, you better create. You better, you better. Your defensive linemen got to be in their gaps. You know, if you're supposed to be in the big gap, cancel out the big gap. You better get there. You got to get back vertical. Uh, you know, there's a lot of those schematic things. We didn't give our linebackers a chance to, to you know, Tony Bell. 
Uh, and Tony Bell's defense, you can look at the tape and say, why did Tony Bell make that play? You're going to see because he, he's trying to make everybody right. Those guys are supposed to be in this gap, so Tony's got this B gap, and he's, he was trying to do too much because the defense line and not where they were supposed to be. Uh, so that's first and foremost we've got to correct. We were lazy on the perimeter. What I mean by that, the little, little bubble screens, little little quick screens out there. We didn't, you know, didn't. We were not doing what we were supposed to do. Our, our eyes were bad on defense. We were looking all over the place instead of just keeping our eyes, you know, where they're supposed to be, doing an doing assignment. Now, once again, you know, does that happen sometimes in other places and all of a sudden, or in other games, but all of a sudden you get a tackle for loss and maybe you don't even know, know it? Yes, but it eventually bites you and it, and it, and it bit us some this week. So defensively, that's first and foremost is gap responsibility. You know, offensively, uh, you know, there was a little bit of uh, – there was a little bit of spark there, you know, in the run game. Okay, a couple guys made some plays. Corey Jordan called some balls. Uh, um, William Tanner called some balls. Made, made a few plays. The young freshman caught the touchdown pass and two catches. So we got to build on those. Uh, I would imagine we're going uh, we're gonna, to we're gonna play some younger guys at wide receiver this week. Okay, uh, I didn't like. Uh, you know, we got some guys making some um, uh, alignment assignment issues. Okay. You know, some of his first game, some of his 50,000 people, yes, okay, and I do expect him to be a better week this week, but you, you know, you get, you get one chance a week, and so, uh, you know, we're going to play the guys that know what to do and, and can execute on Saturday, not just in one-on-ones. Have you had a chance to see any of the game film from Texas Tech? Yes, I have. Uh, obviously, I've watched that game thoroughly, and, and, and so uh, they're good. Uh, they're good. They uh, significantly... I mean, you go to Texas Tech, right? We're top 25 team, top 30 team in the country, and we got the lead 16 to six or seven at one time. Uh, you know, battle back, uh, get down the second half, battle back, close to the seven point game. Um, you know, their their offense, their physical, their power, quarterbacks. You know, big, tall. You know, can throw and run. Uh, big left handed kid. He's played in Memphis. A good quality player. Uh, you know, Steve Campbell. We all know. Steve for a long time. He's a former offensive line guy, very physical, the head coach and offensive coordinator. So if we're not in our or same deal, if you're not in your right gaps against them, right, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna run the ball down, you know, down your throat right at you. Um, you know, defensively, um, you known their defense coordinator for a long time, coached against them for a long time. He's Skip Jackson will stay, good friend of mine. Uh, gonna be sound, gonna mix their, you know, play their three down, zone pressure you. Um, you know, against Texas Tech, they're spread out so much. You know, a lot, a lot too high shell, play rush three, drop eight, and stuff. So, uh, make you earn every, you know, make you earn every inch that you get. They ran 94 plays. <coughs> it said in that last yeah. last game. I mean, obviously Texas Tech is obviously you know they're always you know run that kind of offense. Right. So, do you I mean do you expect UCL to try to run that many or, or close to that? Uh, you know, sometimes that can be overrated. Like we ran what, 80-something this week, we scored 14 points. So they can run 100, we hold them on 21, and I'll, I'll, I'll live with that. Because it can be misleading. The other team's offense is scoring fast, like Kentucky's was, and they only, got, they only had 61 plays. But we're back out there trying to grind out some first downs. Or you turn it over and you get it right back, you know, too. So it can be a little misleading. I think when it's efficient is when you're at 75 to 80 plays, but you score your 30 points and your turnovers are minimized. That's probably the only time you look at that stat and say, you know, good. And, and, but your your point though is 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 correct though. They scored 35 and had 90 something points. I can't remember if they turned the ball over or not. But they probably were where they wanted to be from you know from that standpoint. But I mean, as far as just the the speed that they have to operate, you know, in between plays. I mean, how does, does that compare to maybe some of the teams you guys usually play? We do it. Kentucky does it. Um, you know, that's it is an issue, but it's not like uh, we're not. Everybody doesn't do it. I think they're. I think they play fast, but they also were were sustaining drives. Been there since what 2007, maybe 2008, seven. They have been there since 2007. You know, great venue. They've got great facilities there. I had been there and seen the new turf. You know, the gray, the gray purple deal. But I've seen them. You know, so uh, you know, good non-conference FCS football game. Good out of conference. Uh, two quality uh, programs. Uh, but we got to play better. I have a chance this week. Significant. What were some positives that you saw this past weekend? Uh, positive, I, I like the fact that we uh, offensively scored two touchdowns in the fourth. You know, you know, if you want to, really, they Mary Poppins, right? You say 14-14 in the second half. 
Okay, there's some merit to that. No, there is. There, there's some merit to that. Especially uh, when you're dealing with that many older kids. Okay, because believe it or not, you know, sometimes, you know, you can say, let's play all the young kids, or, or and we were substituting a lot of kids play. But I, I was, that was that was a positive sign. Uh, you know, Kalen Weathers, freshman, making, you know, making some catches. Uh, Corey Jordan, even though he's is a fifth-year senior, still he has never been a go-to guy in the passing game. For him to make some quality catches on third down and keep some drives going, he's pleased with that. Uh, Abu, you know, and Abu can even be better, but you know, 80 something yards, 17 carries. And I like the fact that I just left the building and he's mad at me because we didn't give him the ball more. And that's good because, you know, last year in the past he would let DJ have those, McNeil have those carries and, and, you know, so good. I want him to want the ball more. I want him to, to want touchdowns and, you know, 100 yards and stuff. Uh, he needs that type of mentality. I have no problem with that. That was a positive thing. I thought Charles Sweet played good, our left tackle. I mean, he's as advertised. I mean, he matched up against some SEC opponents, and he turned the tape on. And, and, and you know, whether an NFL scout or not, you'll see he's, he's a good player. No, you were pretty confident in Sweden going in, but as far as those other offensive linemen, how did you feel like they handled, you know, Kentucky? In, in spots, I thought our, our, our young our young right tackle, it was his first game, and, he, you know, he's better than that. He's athleticism. Uh, we didn't get him on the field, but he's trouble. He, he, or, uh, our right tackle, uh, Kadarian Bond, struggled, but uh, once again, you know, it's his first game. He's played against, uh, you know, some NFL guys, but uh, he can play better. But like I said, we've got some other guys that can step in. Sam Curtis did some good things. Uh, there was glim there's glim glimpses all across that offensive line, except for the left tackle. He played consistent the whole game. We got to get the other four guys. We played ten. We got to get the other four guys to be able to be more consistent. You know, and great out there. I thought Smiley, the far fullback, James Ratcliffe, the kids call him Smiley. Uh, I thought he uh, got better from last year, really did. He gives us some punch at that, um, you know, at that fullback position. You'll see him run around. He's a very physical player for us. Not to get off topic, why they call him Smiley? He's just he's always smiling. Always, always, always. Rain, sleet, sleet or snow. He's always smiling. Great kid. We'll practice tonight, normal work week, leave on Friday. Uh, you know, I would imagine, I would guess UCA, how many votes they get this week? I'm sure they got probably I don't the top think 30. It's out yet. Yeah. Right? You know, I think but they lose by seven to the top 25 and they had the lead. So, uh, same deal last year. I mean, last year, remember, they were ahead of Colorado. Different coaching staff, right? But they came in here after, I think it was, you know, had a 14 point lead, I think, against Colorado in the second half. And we got away from them, a couple of turnovers. Uh, you know, and we played well last year when they came in here, but the coaching staff, so, uh, you know, we got to get it going. Do you expect uh, Favre will play at all at quarterback this yeah, week? Yeah, he'll play. Okay. Yeah, he'll play. He'll play. He'll play. And he could have gone back in, but the bottom line is you're going to preach turnovers, and he knows that's what's kept him off the field. And it's funny because, like, watching the game from last year, just look at some personnel stuff, and I mean, he played lights out last year uh, against the Clark, so he really did. He played very well. They, we, we held all of our true freshmen, didn't play them. We only took two on the trip, held those guys. Um, you know, that would be my expectation for our injury. We've got shirt 15 of them again. Um, go from there. Anything else? Good guy.